Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us here at the Mechanics Institute. I'm Laura Shepard, Director of Events, so we welcome you to our program, and we welcome those of you who are watching on Facebook. First of all, we are very pleased to have this program on the new book, California Fights Back, The Golden State in the Age of Trump, with author and political analyst Peter Schrag, in conversation with Carla Marinucci, senior writer for Politico California Playbook. And we're particularly pleased that this program follows Governor Brown's last State of the State address from this morning. So we have lots to talk about. Also, I'd like to thank our co-sponsor, Heyday Books, and also Steve Wasserman, publisher of Heyday, uh, for their wonderful publications, uh, and also for our many collaborations that have been ongoing for many years. This is part of a series, so for all you political junkies, uh, our next event with Heyday will be on February 15th, uh, when we will have a presentation for the new book, Ransoming Pagan Babies, The Selected Writings of Warren Hinkle. And our guest will be Will Hurst, publisher of the Journal of Alta California, with journalists Robert Shear and Deidre English. So please join us on February 15th at 6.30, right here at Mechanics Institute. So once again, this is such an important day to be talking about these important subjects about how California is modeling and surviving and thriving uh, in this era. So I'd like to in introduce you to our guests. Peter Schrag is a journalist, a scholar of California politics and political history, and the author of numerous books. His publications include when Europe Was a Prison Camp, Father and Son Memoirs, 1940 to 41, Final Test, The Battle for Adequacy in America's Schools, and Paradise Lost, California's Experience, America's Future, which was a New York Times notable book. Schrag served as a columnist and page editor at the Sacramento Bee for 19 years and was a visiting scholar at UC Berkeley's Institute of Governmental Studies from 2001, sorry, 2011 to 2013. And Carla Marinucci, Marinucci is Politico's California senior political writer and produces the Daily California Playbook. Marinucci formerly is of the San Francisco Chronicle and has covered presidential, state, and local politics since 1996 in California, including seven gubernatorial elections in the state. She has consistently been named one of California's best political writers and bloggers, and is a regular political analyst on KQED, KPCC, and radio and television stations around the state, and also has appeared on MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, and Al Jazeera. So please welcome Peter Schrag and Carla Marinucci. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being here. It's so great to be with such an engaged audience. I know there's lots of political junkies out here in the audience. <laughs> um, and this is going to be a great discussion with Peter Schrag. This, this man is the dean for those of us who've covered California politics. Um, uh, so we, we're going to leave plenty of time for questions. We want to talk about California. We want to talk about the issues with Trump. But I have to uh, bring it back uh, to what was mentioned. Uh, I was just up in Sacramento today in the legislative chambers watching Jerry Brown deliver his 16th and final state, of the, a state address. Um, Peter, I've got to get your thoughts on this because Brown came into that chamber to standing ovation, to accolades. Uh, you know, he took them all in and then he said, uh, as my father would say, I accept your nomination. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards we asked him, uh, so is this your last campaign? And he said, uh, never say never. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just your thoughts on the end of the era here. Uh, are we going to ever see uh, another politician like Jerry Brown? Uh, he's, he's the most interesting uh, political figure that I've met uh, in my life. Um, and uh, I first saw him in his first incarnation, as it were, as governor. Um, that's now in the late 70s. Um, 
And uh, when I got to know him a little bit, quite a bit, actually, uh, and when he was very accessible uh, uh, to the media and used to hang out at, uh, what was the name of the bar across from the Capitol? I can't, <laughs> look, I can't remember now. But anyway, and he was very accessible and, and, and was a very different personality, not different personality, but a, his politics were very different. And he was regarded by many people including, of course, the famous Mike Royko uh, remark uh, as a little bit flaky um, and, uh, and was a little bit feeling his oats. And, uh, and he's changed a great deal, some people say, uh, because of Ann Gust, his wife. Uh, but I think it's also, he's had a lot of experience. He's had a lot of experience in local government. Uh, and he have often said he now knows what I was doing to local government when I was governor the first time. So, so he he's been he's been a uh, he's a he's a fascinating guy, and he's br he's brilliant, and he he doesn't hide his light under a bushel. Uh, he he um, uh, and you know and you get him into, I mean, a canon law or you know anything like that, and he's but he's very bright. He's well educated. He's well read. Um, and uh, and uh, there were moments when we all thought he was a little bit chilly, a little bit standoffish, despite his accessibility. Um, but there there are moments when I've seen him when he's been very tender and very loving and very sweet. Um, we had a mutual friend named Ivan Illich, um, who was a, a Catholic Monsignor and himself an influence on Jerry, a big influence on Jerry. Uh, and when Ivan Illich died, and I saw him last at Jerry Brown's, where, uh, when he was mayor, uh, what I call Jerry Brown's ashram in Oakland, uh, uh, where, where, he, where he lived. And, uh, and when uh, Illich died a few years later, Jerry wrote the most mo moving, wonderful tribute to Ivan Illich. Uh, and I never thought that Jerry could do that, but he was, anyway, I've said too much. No, I mean, I think, <laughs> you know, you brought up a couple of things that uh, we want to get into talking about California and its role with Donald Trump, uh, Jerry Brown did not mention Donald Trump by name today, uh, but he definitely took on Donald Trump, uh, talking about climate change and other things, and we want to talk about that. You know, you have covered politics for decades uh, in California and on and the national scene, and I, I just want to start with a kind of a general question in terms of how, what, what is the biggest way, do you think, what is the, uh, that, that Donald Trump has changed Politics change the political scene for someone who's seen it all. What? what well, as, what? I, as I said, uh, as I said to you, Carla, earlier, he put a certain four-letter word on the front page um, that never happened before, and I think it's a good, a good symptom, a good emblem of the kind of uh, person he is. Um, and uh, and obviously, you could, you could, we could, we could talk till tomorrow morning about all the things and all the problems that uh, he's come with and that he's created and the difficulties that people like you try to cover it every day um, and trying to keep up with this man um, uh, who will say uh, who will say red is green today and will say blue is white tomorrow and uh, and then will reverse himself the next day so it it it, 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 it he is and we're all kind of attached in some strange way to his ego. Um, we are all being manipulated by that ego, uh, even in our uh, revulsion. Um, and I sometimes used to, you know, my wife goes bananas every time she looks at the headlines. Um, and, and, and obviously she, as a, as a woman, um, feels a lot of things even more sharply than I do. Um, and I think many, I, I suspect, Many women in this country do as well. Um, uh, the, the kind of global disrespect, you should pardon the oxymoron here, uh, uh, for, for women. Um, and, but but there, you, could, you could catalog, the, the, ca the catalog is endless. I mean, uh, and Jerry talked about this uh, today, uh, about what makes California different. And that's, that's the focus of your book, California Fighting Back Against This. Uh, you say in the beginning of the book that that Trump threatens California's progressive, if still imperfect, success as a model for the world. 
Talk a little bit about that. When you talk, uh, you mentioned, um, you, you've mentioned, you know, California is different from so many other ways. This is a state that Trump has said is out of control, quote unquote. What, where's California been most successful? What sets California apart in your view? Well, well uh, I mean, one of the things we have to remember is that in the early 90s, California wanted to do what Trump, well, California wanted to do in California, what Trump wants to do with America. We wanted to drive out immigrants. Uh, we wanted to uh, uh, end any kind of favorable treatment for immigrants. Uh, we passed an, an, an initiative by a fairly large majority um, that would have denied all undocumented immigrants the right to schooling, the right to public health care, the right to social services. That was all uh, there. It also required uh, all public uh, police officers, teachers, whatever, doctors, to report any undocumented immigrants uh, to, to uh, immigration authorities and to the attorney general and whatnot. Um, so those are all things that we have now reversed 180 degrees. We've now passed uh, statutes, sanctuary laws, whatever, to prohibit uh, people from doing precisely what they were once required to do. They, they used to talk about Prussians, you know, that, that Prussians, that anything in Prussia that was not mandatory was prohibited. Uh, and there was something, <laughs> and there, there was there's something, something similar uh, to that. But in any case, um, we reversed 180 degrees, and in that sense alone, it seems to me, we can set, we, we, we are a model for the rest, possibly a model for the rest of the country. Um, we've been there, folks. We, we're where um, Kansas is now, or where North Carolina is now, uh, and we've gotten, we, we've gotten over it. Uh, and, uh, and in addition to that, of course, California, with its uh, uh, diverse uh, population, majority minority, a state in which in another 30 or 40 years, Latinos will be an absolute majority. Uh, with that, that, um, that diverse population, uh, with, uh, with a tolerance of immigrants, uh, with strong environmental laws, um, with uh, all of the, the kind of progressive legislation, we are number six in the world in our economy. We have gained more jobs back since the 2008 recession uh, on average than the country as a whole. We've been ex economically very successful. Uh, Jerry Brown talked about that a little bit today. Um, and so we are, it, and yes, we have lots of problems. And you know, you know them as well as I do. Uh, tons of them having to do with unfunded pension liabilities, uh, housing shortage is dreadful, uh, all series of things. Uh, but, but we have a government that works. This is a government at the moment that works uh, uh, unlike the gov the, that other government. Um, and we, we're, at, in a way, uh, uh, I, as I was writing this little uh, book, um, it occurred to me that California is a little bit like um, we're interposing ourselves, as John Cal Calhoun would have said, or, as, or, or we're... Um, nullifying as or trying to um, uh, obviously not in the way that Calhoun meant it or not for the purposes that Calhoun intended um, but it's also interesting um, uh, I can't remember the exact title of the book now it's quoted in, in this book um, uh, uh, the, governor, the governor of Texas Rick Perry uh, about 10 years ago wrote a book that was essentially uh, the case for how we, Texas, could resist Washington. And it's, it, strangely, it's a, it's a title that is very invocative of what California is doing now, except for a different purpose. Um, but in any case, we, have, we are, I think, a model, despite all our flaws and our problems, um, for where the country, the country uh, might be going or should be going. Um, and that's, of course, also why we've been fighting so hard to protect what we've got uh, and why the Attorney General is suing the feds right and left and why uh, the uh, Air Resources Board uh, is sticking to its guns on tight emission controls 
and why uh, uh, the whole series of things. So we're basically um, trying to protect what we have um, and protect. And I think that's not ideological. I think that's totally self-serving. You know, it, let's uh, let's talk immigration for you, yeah. because you mentioned uh, Prop 187, um, uh, the the kind of ads and the kind of things that were uh, uh, that the that the voters looked at back then. The ad by Pete Wilson, yeah. they keep coming. Right. Uh, the Trump campaign released an ad this week that was sort of very similar. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, uh, is it just the change in demographics that has changed California's? mentality on this one or what I, I don't know I don't know but it's interesting um, uh, and it's, it never struck me until I was working on this little book that the moment that the pivotal moment in a way came with Schwarzenegger oddly enough and Schwarzenegger um, uh, when he was elected well Schwarzenegger as a person had lots of similarities to Trump He's, a, he's egotistical, he's, he's a misogynist, uh, he's all of those things. Uh, the difference, of course, is that Schwarzenegger really made himself, and, and Trump certainly did not. But, 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 there, but Schwarzenegger came in also being very uh, abusive of uh, opponents, called, uh, called Democrats girly men, and had all kinds of nasty language about, about uh, his opponents. Uh, and then, and then he ran five ballot measures in 1993. Uh, 2005. 2005. Yeah, right. 2005. Um, I'm getting. You get old. You get. <laughs> dates get uh, in two, uh, uh, which he supported. Ran a special election as they were going down to defeat, and they were all creamed by the voters uh, for various reasons. Um, he realized that he had a change, and before the, even before the votes came in, but when the outcome was clear, he changed his tune a great deal, and all of a sudden became concerned about global and war, global warming. Um, uh, became uh, 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 he talked about big uh, public works projects. Uh, it became right. he, 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 he went he went left sort of, um, and and so I think that was kind of an em emblem. Of, what caused that? Partly it was that when Pete Wilson supported Prop 187 and ran his re-election campaign in 1994, uh, largely, as you said, that they, they, keep, they keep coming, uh, attacks on, uh, on immigrants, uh, um, uh, I think close to a million on uh, uh, Latinos uh, registered and became naturalized. And of course, immediately, given the campaign, immediately registered as Democrats. And so you had this great swing. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing was that the California Republican Party, to some extent like now the National Republican Party, was not very uh, welcoming to minorities or to women. And so, and to this day, uh, you can see the difference. Um, so uh, so that it became a this whole drift uh, toward the Democrats, uh, which has been ongoing, and, and, and those Latinos, and they voted. And it's, we know that uh, President Trump is supposed to formally announce on Monday uh, his immigration policy. Some of that is leaking out already, uh, but there are reports that he's going to be coming to California, um, possibly after the State of the Union address, uh, not to, uh, uh, in, in response to the wildfires or the mudslides, but to visit the border wall prototypes uh, down in <laughs> San Diego. What's your reaction to that? What, I mean, and um, what do you think the effects will be if Trump gets what he wants, which is an end to, quote unquote, chain migration, which is really family reunification? That's a that's a, a an aspect of migration, of, of immigration here in California that has brought many can, um, strong, you know, engineers and other folks to Silicon Valley. This idea of family reunification. Uh, so, so anyway, your, your thoughts on him coming to the, uh, can, the border wall? My question is, if he comes, can we put up the wall behind him fast <laughs> enough? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, that, but but you know, this this issue of deal making with the Democrats 
It's right here in California. Those eight border wall prototypes have cost $20 million so far. Um, you know, is, do you think, uh, is Trump going to get what he wants with regard to this wall? And what will be the effects on California if there's no family uh, reunification? I, I don't think, I, I, I don't believe that a, a, a wall as a physical wall is at all possible. A wall as a metaphor, maybe something else, increased border patrol, technology, more people, whatever, mm -hmm. which they're doing anyway. But it seems to me as a physical thing, I mean, you think about all the ways that the border is no longer a line. It's a community. It's a region. Um, it's a region with just enormous amounts of interchange, families, businesses, uh, kids going to school across the border, um, uh, all kinds of cross-border health understandings and, and environmental and water resource uh, uh, I mean, it's all kinds of stuff. There's no way you can build a wall in the middle of all of that. Uh, it's just not possible. And all the, tra uh, the transport, the trade, uh, the tourism, and everything that goes back and forth. So I don't think a, a physical wall, uh, maybe in a couple of spots uh, in the middle of the desert or whatever, but, but uh, I mean, he, he, this was a campaign, some piece of campaign rhetoric that then became a thing. Is he, is he going to make good on a promise, though? We've heard these reports that the Department of Justice is going to go after sanctuary city uh, leaders. Yeah, right. Mayors, possibly. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, up there in Sacramento today, Kevin DeLeon, the, the state senate pro tem, uh, very strong, had very strong language, you know, kind of bring it on. Uh, this well, is no, nowhere has California been more of a state of resistance with Becerra, with uh, De Leon, et cetera, yeah. than on this issue of sanctuary cities. That's right. Is, is California sort of against the grain on this? Uh, are I've, I've heard some Democrats say they think this is a risky uh, it, it uh, is a, it, tactic. It, it, it is a little bit risky. And, you know, and, and it seems to me you, you have to keep coming back to the, fa to the fact that federal law is still what it is. And, and we're interposing ourselves. Uh, uh, and... and and, and yes, but, but I also think that if, if Jeff Sessions tries to arrest Kevin De Leon and prosecute him, he's never going to find a jury within a thousand miles that would convict him. <laughs> so, so it, you know, and the same thing would be true for a whole lot of mayors. I mean, well, you've heard Libby Schaff in Oakland, where we live, uh, say, "Okay, I'm going to, I'm ready to go to jail." That's right. Yeah, well, she's not, she, she doesn't need to worry. I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think that there's some things that, and I'm not enough of a lawyer to know that some things that where they may try to crack down on banks dealing with uh, marijuana uh, dealers who are, you know, whether they can seize assets. I don't know what the law is on that. But it seems to me, again, if they arrest you for smoking pot, they can't convict you. There's, no, there's not going to be a jury anywhere that's going to convict... I, you smoke pot? And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but... But, but, but yeah, I mean... This, this, isn't this the issue, though, uh, when we're talking about the, this, the DACA students and these dreamers? Because California has more to, more to well, yeah. lose here than, than any other yeah, state. Right, right. We've got 200,000 people here. 90% of them are in school or working. Right, right. Uh, they contribute millions, $350 million to the state's economy and taxes. These are not slackers in any sense. Um, so, uh, you know, is Trump really going to go after these folks? Considering that California's economy uh, will take a big hit, and uh, if California's economy takes a hit, so does the New York Stock Exchange. Correct. Well, <laughs> according to today's paper, uh, he's again softened his tune on on that. And but I think on that one, I think you have to. It's like if you don't like what Trump says, like Mark Twain would say, just wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> you know, and 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 so it. You don't know where the, where they're going. I can't. I don't know what they can do to officials in sanctuary cities. Um, can they arrest them? You know, the the mayor of Oakland or Libby Schaff or uh, Berkeley or whatever. Uh, they arrest uh, Gil Garcetti and you know whatever. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to believe that they can. 
the, getting convictions. Th this goes to sort of an issue that you deal with in the book, which is, um, you know, Trump has broken the rules in so many different ways. The rules of engagement are different. You mentioned uh, the four-letter words, uh, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> asshole, uh, you know, uh, immigration comment, and so forth. That that was a, a headline for a day. Now it's gone. Uh, the Stormy Daniels uh, that would have been a big story on any <laughs> other in any other administration. Uh, it's kind of out of the headline. It's made her career, though, right? <laughs> it certainly has. <laughs> What, how, how has he managed, well, first of all, why, are the re, why does the Republican Party not express more outrage? Even evangelicals, or uh, leaders, were, uh, were telling Politico this week, they're giving him a mulligan on this I, whole issue of, uh, I, of, of, I, I, I wonder of about Stormy the, Daniels. I mean, a Republic, I, mean I'm, I wonder about Republicans, and including what used to be, not people I necessarily agreed with, but the Republicans who... John McCain, or you know, whoever, um, uh, and you know, I sometimes wonder about um, um, uh, uh, Collins, uh, mm -hmm. Susan Collins in Maine, uh, who I always thought was a very thoughtful, but she also voted for the tax bill, right? Um, so I, I, you know, I, but I think they, to some extent, I, I think they have a tiger by the tail, and I don't think they know how to let go. And 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 the the uh, uh, I, I don't know. And but I think a lot may depend on what happens this November. If 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 in fact, um, um, let's say that the seven Republicans That's were right. being targeted in California. Um, let's say that five or six of them lose, uh, and they're replaced by Democrats. That's not sure either. Um, the fact that Ed Royce quit could very well be replaced by another Republican. But let's the same assume that that there's that that they lose enough. Let's say they lose their majority in the House. I think that might change the party's tune, and probably would change it even before the election, when they begin to see what's going on, as Schwarzenegger did in 2005, that they ch start changing their tune. Um, on DACA, on uh, ACA, on whatever. But why do you think that hasn't happened yet? For instance, uh, let's take Kevin McCarthy. He's been he's been in every photo op with uh, President Trump recently, uh, on the tax bill and everything else. Even though a lot of folks in his district will be hurt by that tax bill, by Obamacare, uh, any kind of attempts at Obamacare repeal, yeah. uh, DACA, and so right. forth. Uh, he, Devin Nunes, is another one who's been out there just aggressively pushing uh, the, the Trump agenda, um, and yet uh, um, they're, they're hanging tough with him. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I think they're focused on that narrow, relatively narrow constituency. I mean, let's remember that Trump did not win the popular vote in 2016. Um, and that his base is what is a thirty something percent um, so and I think that those guys, those those republicans are still and and of course the way that districts are organized and gerrymandered in many states, not in this state by the way, uh, because we do have a fair redistricting reasonably fair redistricting process now, but in many states um, uh, if you're in if one of those safe Republican districts, um, you worry about being hit from the right and not not by the Democrats. There is concern too that uh, California is with its top two primary uh, that this may play into whether the House yes. can flip or not. Yes. Uh, right now we have 67 Democratic challengers uh, coming forward for those 17. Republican House seats here in California. 14. 60, 14. 14? 14. 17. Republican. Altogether. No? House, uh, House Republicans? Altogether. In the House. Yeah. yeah 14. Yeah, 14. Okay, 67 d Democratic challengers. Yeah. Uh, there, there is some concern that with that many Democrats, uh, the, the, the party's influence is going to be uh, diminished, could, could and be. you could ha end up with two Republicans yes. uh, in, in some of those seats. Do you I, see that happening? I, I'm not enough of a uh, I need Bruce Kane to, to, to <laughs> tell me, but but I do think that uh, one of the, my worries, and 
I was never a particularly hardcore Democrat. I was kind of a mugwump or something. But 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 it's it's certainly true that that I I worry that the Democrats will screw it screw it up for themselves. And by, by how so? How so? Huh? Why? How, why? Between well, between in San Francisco they called the, the moderates and the progressives. Um, some people would say it's between the left and the far left, but whatever it is, um, the, div- the division, and we've had it in California, uh, the fight over the, uh, the chair of the party, um, the, they almost went after Anthony Rendon. The, That's right. Uh, the, the whole be- issue of single payer. Because, because, yeah, on single payer, which was never going to, you know, uh, we've, got, we've got the whole issue of uh, the impeachment and, and, and Steyer, who... Uh, I find that, but that also may be showing my age now. Uh, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too old, and I sh- I'm not sympathetic enough with these young Turks. But, 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 I worry that again, the whole the whole issue about impeachment, which until uh, both houses of Congress change, there isn't a prayer, and then. You've got Spence, Pence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, <laughs> exactly. It's under Pence. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I mean, you, you're you're right. There's a lot. To, do the Democrats have a have a message? Have you seen no. an effect? No, you, you have not. No, I no, I I think. I mean, as I said, I think one of my hopes here is that California is partly a message. Um, uh, obviously, that's not. A political position, uh, but it seems to me it's a, it's something out there, and California historically has always been. Did I just get louder? Uh, uh, California has always been uh, a, a bellwether, uh, you know, uh, for the country. Um, this is where things happen often first, and uh, um, and somebody asked me today at an interview and said. Uh, but does, isn't California often considered way out there and beyond, you know? And, and I said yes, flaky and kooky and all of that, and that's all true. But California and is and and different. But California often is also first um, uh, on many things. So, um, and I know that doesn't get you to the Democrats' message. I'm worried about the Democrats um, not getting a message and being getting hung up on things that will again cater that we'll, we will have our own left-wing Tea Party, if it were. Maybe we already do. Um, and that, uh, uh, and, and as we know, uh, the Tea Party has not been very good for the Republican Party. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I want to get into how you see uh, 2018 and 2020, uh, but I just want to hear your thoughts on one, the one place that Jerry Brown really has pushed back on Donald Trump is the whole issue of climate change. Right. It's been said that he has become the global ambassador, right. the world's ambassador on this issue of climate change. How, if, uh, you know, with offshore drilling, the environmental issues, uh, just talk a little bit about that and how California, is that going to hurt Trump or... Uh, well, well, I think, uh, yes, the trouble is, I don't know whether uh, the offshore drilling, I don't think anything's going to happen for quite a while, if ever, for lots of reasons, procedural and legal, legal challenges and whatnot. And, you know, and they're already, uh, and what they did with Florida, giving, giving Florida an exception was really stupid. Uh, 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 and and uh, <laughs> I, I mean, they're not known for being policy Geniuses, uh, uh, the uh, so the, so, uh, but uh, and on the on the on the sanctuary thing, I don't know to what extent that will ever be a big issue in Kansas. <laughs> you know that that somebody's going to say I'm not going to vote for Democrats because they got sanctuary cities in California. I am, I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's uh, they'll say that's the crazies out on the Pacific, um, and uh, so I I don't see that. Um, I think the same thing is true with marijuana. I think the country is 
pretty much liberalized itself on marijuana. Yeah, I mean, let's, uh, just your thoughts on that, because as you know, like on January 1st, California became the, the world's largest legal recreational market. Right. Uh, it's, it's a market that's expected to be worth $7 billion mm -hmm. within a very short time. There's already hundreds of businesses registered here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions just threw a monkey wrench into it in January by saying, uh, well, wait, wait a minute, maybe we might start prosecuting. You mm -hmm. know, before the, the, they said that was not our priority, he's now signaled that maybe it's going to be again. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, is this just another place where California well, is? Well, I, I just don't know who's who he's going to get convictions on. That's all. I, it, 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 you know, so I, 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 it, it's hard for me to know. The one, the, the two things that bar, worry me most are the tax bill, um, and I was going to, I was thinking about something else. That, there's a health care issue also. Well, well there's a the health care, but yeah. there was something else that uh, that that they were starting to get on. Now it slipped my mind. I'll think of it in a minute. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, it, for 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 those reasons, I think you're you're seeing Tom Steyer's uh, uh, campaign. Now he's putting millions of dollars into it. So let's talk about like what it looks like ahead for 2018. Uh, first of all, do you think Nancy Pelosi's going to end up being the speaker? Uh, well, I, again, we could do worse. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's as you know, there's a. Uh, there's a debate within the Democratic Party whether she should be. No, I understand that, and that's a, that's one of those problems, you know, whether you you know you get somebody who's younger and newer, and 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 I I've I haven't watched her that closely when she was speaker. Um, she seemed to do okay, and and. Uh, uh, but does the party need to look to another generation now at this point? I think that tends to be a little bit of a of a. Of a, of a of a false issue. Um, uh, I don't know what is characteristic of the new generation. That means they want single payer. They're not going to. They're not going to get single payer in California or nationally. It's just. I mean, not not at this point. There's just too much. The same thing. Um, you know, it's not not going to happen. Um, I'm trying to think of. There must be. There's. There's well. There's a, the, the Tom Steyer thing. Um, well, what about Steyer? About, about uh, the impeachment? You, yeah, I mean, is he, this is a huge campaign, it's millions of dollars, he's all over the tube all the time. Um, is he pushing the party and its grassroots to, to really, left. to push this issue? Are they going to be able to ignore an impeachment campaign? Well, they, they could, <laughs> if, if they don't win the House, they... they, they <laughs> per, That's dead. Necessarily, they will no, ignore it. Yeah. Um, and, and, but he's putting a lot of money into that as well. Yeah, well, no, I understand that. If he wants, yeah. if he can elect Democrats, you know, but, but, but the idea of, I mean, I think to some extent, Trump for the, for the sort of vaguely left liberal Democrats and all those organizations, Planet Parenthood, Environmental Defense Fund, all of them, um, he's been a great fundraiser for them. I mean, I don't, I've never, my, my inbox is jammed with pictures every day. You know, did you know they're about to take over your, take out your house, or yeah. you know, or they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're about to take your, send your children to prison or whatever. <laughs> you know, you send five dollars or ten, whatever you can, and I get them, dozens of them every day. Yeah. And it's been, a, they've been a great fundraiser, um, and and Trump, uh, you know, gets in his own way, trips over his own feet. Uh, Pence will be more focused. Um, in some ways, probably more effective. Uh, maybe not as crazy. Maybe he won't go to war with North Korea as <laughs> readily. Um, uh, uh, that sounds like a joke. It shouldn't be. No, uh, but uh, in fact, uh, Jerry Brown did, uh, mentioned today that the uh, doomsday clock, we've moved closer to doomsday uh, as of today. Uh, and it, he said it's uh, closer than, it's, we're now closer than we've been since the Cold War right. uh, to some kind yeah. of... Uh, uh, nuclear uh, um, uh, and, confrontation. And, and I don't know what Trump will do if uh, when the when the cops are knocking on the door, um, what what he would do then. And and I don't mean that literally uh, take him off to jail, um, but but you know if 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 he get if they get really close to the family on obstruction of justice, um, 
I don't know what he'll do, and you know he'll try to fire Mueller. I don't know what. Well, he he said we've uh, yeah we want to talk about this because we've got some Californians that are really uh, at the center of this. Adam Schiff, right, uh, as right. as the uh, uh, ranking Democrat. He seems on to be a good guy, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious to your thoughts on him and his future. Uh, you know, here in California, he has become a national figure uh, based on he is just all over the tube on this uh, right. on this issue. Uh, he's a former prosecutor uh, and someone who's who comes off as very sort of studied, intellectual, uh, sort of an anti-Trump. Right. Um, uh, he's been a big figure. Eric Swalwell here from the Bay Area is another one uh, who's turned up to be a Jackie Spear. Right. All of them on the uh, Intel Committee. Uh, do you think this thing goes with Trump has said he wants to be interviewed by Robert Mueller under oath? Then his lawyer said, uh, wait a minute, no, uh, maybe, maybe not so much today. <laughs> I think several people tweeted that uh, it appeared Trump didn't understand that whether he speaks to the FBI under oath or not under oath, it's still a crime to lie to them. Right, right. Okay, so, just, right, right. Uh, but what, do you see this going anywhere? What, what's your thoughts on I don't know. I don't know. I don't Think, I think it may not go any further than this conversation. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know whether they... Um, but it seems... It, but it's just another mark of how different know, he is. And I don't know whether that conversation will be an interview, or will it be a, you know, so what would you have for breakfast? Uh, you, know, you know, how's the wife? You know, uh, you know whether it's anything... You know, yeah. uh, so I, it's hard to know. Yeah. Um, uh, and and uh, well, someone else who's had a big role in this has been Diane Feinstein. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about her. Uh, she's being challenged. She's being primary. Yeah, by, I was uh, going to ask you about Kevin De Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, your thoughts because you you mentioned the 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 schism within the Democratic Party right, right. between the left and the far left yeah. um, in San Francisco. She, yeah. Uh, yeah, in San Francisco. <laughs> What about Feinstein? Uh, the recent poll uh, uh, that, that we had on, in Politico, our playbook, uh, indicated she's one of the five most vulnerable U.S. senators in the country right now. Um, wh- do, you, do you think she's that vulnerable? What, what, uh, what do you give? What do you, I don't, how do you uh, look at her prospects? I don't know. And I, as I said, I don't know. I, I, I mean, that, it, it may be that people have just gotten tired of her. I mean, it may be. And she said she, she's guilty of saying, saying something tentatively nice about Trump once, which is, uh, I guess, is enough for some people to want to get her, get her out of there. But, uh, that's right. I, she, said, she said at the Commonwealth Club that she, I think that she hoped he could be a good president. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> right. That's that right. Got her, that got yeah. her in a lot of yeah, trouble. You know, yeah, no, yeah. I, you know, I hope that my three-year-old sleeps through the night. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, but, but, but... You know, she's. I mean, I've I've always respected her, and I thought she was. Uh, but um, and and uh, but. Uh, Do you think that I, the, le- the this this issue about the the divide in the Democratic Party here? Um, well, he it, certainly represents part of that. Yeah, a younger Latino yeah, yeah, uh, right. uh, electorate. Right. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, yeah, I, the other issue is there's a lot of hunger among some of these younger politicians in California to move up, and there's no place to go. Yes, uh, you've that's had right. you've had Jerry blocking the. Uh, well, Jerry's gone now. No, <laughs> he's, he's about to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, that's right. We, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But, how, okay, how do you how do you see that one? By the way, okay, the, the, the governor's race. Uh, you've got oh, Gavin yeah. Newsom. Uh, 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 Antonio Villaraigosa, uh, the state treasurer John Chang, yeah. uh, Delaney Easton on the Democratic side. Um, wh- you know who's, who looks to you like I, they're going to fill Jerry's shoes? It's a very tough question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think it's, it's a very tough question. I, I don't. At the moment, I'm not totally enamored of any of them. I don't know Chang at all, so I don't. I can't say about Chang. Um, uh, you know, we've all watched. I, I watched uh, Viragosa when he was in Sacramento. Um, um, he was. A good, These are going to be big fil- shoes to fill, though, aren't they? 
in terms of uh, oh, well, Jerry, they, they, they will they, they, they will they will all sink in his shoes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, they, I mean, no, there's. Absolute... I mean, wasn't wasn't one of his strengths that he could, he, in some respects, was the adult in the room up there? Many yeah, <laughs> people, and, including yourself, wrote. And, 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 and I'm worried that they, that that any one of them um, will pay too high a price to get elected, and will have too many debts debts to pay. Once he gets elected, and uh, which uh, Jerry resisted, and Jerry was, um, uh, in some ways, by his nature, a skinflint and a, a good for him. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I, I thought Jerry was coming out of his seminary experience, whatever. Always thought a hair shirt was good for you. Um, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it helped develop character. Um, and so, um, uh, but I, 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 I'm not impressed, totally impressed by any of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to hear, you know, uh, we're going to open it up to some questions now. Uh, just one last one. Uh, uh, 2020, uh, how is Kamala Harris looking to you? She's the one who keeps getting mentioned as well, a potential yeah, challenger yeah, I, to Trump. That's right, that's right, yeah, that's right. And, but, uh, but uh, of course... That was um, in between that we had um, um, Oprah. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was a, a moment. That's she right, popped that's up, right. She popped was. up and popped down. A Californian, yes, <laughs> she is, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, the, the little I've seen of her and watched her, I think I'm very impressed. Is she, is she president in 2020? Who knows? I mean, who, who knows? And that's, that, again, is kind of formalist like thinking. She's black. She's a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, I mean, so many things can happen between now and then. Oh, yeah. And this, mean, is, yeah. this is now an old man talking. You know? <laughs> but but I've, I've really, I mean, there have been, you know, I mean, um, you know, and how many, t- how many things have I written yeah. <laughs> that turned out six months later to be Totally wrong. That's right. <laughs> okay, well, let's open it up to questions. Where do you think California should push back on Trump? By the way, I'd like to uh, get your thoughts to get your thoughts to Peter. So uh, let's let's hear from some of you in the audience in terms of oh, what. I have a question here. Yeah, hold on. How do we give uh, government enough power to be effective and not enough to be corrupted? Did you hear that one, Peter? No. How, how do you give government Just enough one, two, power to be effective? And not enough to be corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a twenty million dollar question. Right? Um, <laughs> we'll take me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, uh, Money and I, 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 I don't know the answer to that. Um, I thought the one thing that uh, was a good suggestion that Trump made uh, a couple of weeks ago was to bring back pork. Believe it or not, that pork made Congress function better. That if you could get something for your own district and you could, and you could wheel and deal for that, that that might make, uh, make Congress do public works projects and all of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but I, I think that's probably the only thing that I... I uh, but, and, and I'm not sure whether that's corruption or it's whatever it is. Um, you know, they um, uh, uh, mm-hmm. names again escape me. But mm-hmm. when we passed the uh, the Fair Political Practices Act back in mm-hmm. seventy, whatever it was, right, yeah. um, there were a lot of people, including George Gmajan, by the way, who said that uh, this was a law that prohibited people from uh, basically being wined and dined by lobbyists and uh, and all of that kind of stuff. So all the good parties that used to take place at the Senator Hotel paid for by lobbyists, which were all basically to which people of both parties were invited and they had a good time together and they drank together and whatever, um, that that made uh, everything in California friendlier and easier and people got along better and there wasn't this extreme partisanship. Um, I think there's some truth to that. So it seems to me one of the things that maybe we have done 
uh, that has increased um, uh, 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 dysfunction uh, is that we've made it less corrupt uh, or try to make it less corrupt. Um, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the fringes on this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but, but uh, who was who's the Republican from Marin County? Forget now. Uh, Marx, uh, 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 not, what's Is there a name? Republican from Marin County? Uh, <laughs> Marin, yes. Well, San Francisco, and he was a moderate. He, Milton Marks. Milton, Milton Marks. Right, okay. Thank, yeah, and it was, but it wasn't Milton. It was uh, somebody. Anyway, you got you got the right guy, and I had the wrong guy. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, uh, 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 I thought it was a good point about that political the political reform act may have in fact made things nastier politically in Sacramento. Uh, but I don't know about corruption. I, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. All right, we got a question back there. Question here. Um, I think one way, to, first of all, to counteract Trump is to make liberal use of the Tenth Amendment, especially when the United States fails to enact certain policies, we could step into the breach. Uh, I think it's also instructive that the book of Ezekiel ends with a building plan and not a lecture, which means you do the do instead of doing the talk, and I think that's exactly what we're doing here in the Bay Area through local and regional agencies which are working on common problems, whether it's transportation, whether it's cleaning up the Bay. So I think that's another way to contract it. But I think you're also missing the elephant in the room. And that is the hit that we have taken as a result of the climate conditions. I believe that as a result of the fires and the floods, we're over $10 billion in the hole. And if anyone thinks it's going to get better next year, forget it. Just take a look outside. You're not going to see rain for another month. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have some bad situations. So my question is, couldn't California maybe take the lead in starting a process of desalination, and I'm not trying to minimize the complications, but other countries are doing that, which will not only change the policy in California, but could change the policy in other states because we could bring water to other states where they have good land but no water. So we can literally change what's happening in other places. Yeah, and I'm the, wondering, why uh, aren't we going in that direction? The, you've raised a good point, which Jerry Brown raised today, which is the climate issue and its impact on the fires and the mudslides here in California, and he has raised the issue of the, the incredible cost to California uh, on this. Uh, Trump, he, he said, there's, the, the, all the nations have signed on, of course, to the Paris Climate Change Agreement, except for one, and that's because of one man in Washington said that today. Uh, but, but the point is raised, the desalinization uh, issue has been brought up in Southern California, and I think it's one of the projects uh, that the Trump administration is looking at. Uh, but on, on climate, it's a good point on climate change. I mean, this is the one area where Trump uh, is, is, uh, is, is really at loggerheads with California and, and continues to be. And on, he didn't uh, have much to say about the wildfires and mudslides. And we're saying that, uh, you know, he, he, isn't, he didn't come out here for that and hasn't really um, sort of acknowledged what's going on here uh, on, on that issue. Uh, Jerry talked quite a bit about the cli- adapting to uh, getting prepared for climate and the effects of climate, but he talked mainly about water storage, as I recall, yes. building dams right. and yeah. uh, reservoirs, uh, <clears throat> and, and the desalinization. I don't know what the economics of that are, um, um, what the costs are in terms of energy and all of that. Um, and I, I just don't, I have not studied it, and I don't know. Uh, but the long-term view, I think, is one thing that Jerry Brown did bring up today. Yes. Uh, the other a- aspect of that was high-speed rail. He, uh, right. he, uh, he, he defended it today and said California will be the first uh, to, to do this project. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, yes, it will be expensive. He even said, you know, the Bay Bridge, uh, that ended up uh, $6 billion over cost. Uh, uh, yeah, I know that, but that won't happen with high-speed rail. <laughs> so, yeah, no. and he, he was, his defense of it was, uh, was very strong today. Um, it's, I, it's, he's hoping to get federal money. Is Trump going to give him any money for high-speed rail? <laughs> well, he'll get, he'll get it from President Pence. <laughs> no, I... I, 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 I this is one that I don't know where Jerry. I mean, they, I mean, he's so hard-headed in so many things, and I love I love riding French trains. I love the TGV, um, and but it's a totally different. 
geography, it's different environment, it's different everything, different economics, um, and 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 a different culture. It, it it's it's just not comparable. And I just I don't see it. I don't see it happening um, uh, now. Maybe, and I think to some extent, this is he trying to make good with his father. Pardon the the me. legacy issue. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the tramp, the tra- trying to be a, well, a, both the big projects, yeah. the, the, both of them, yeah. water and transportation, yeah. and and uh, and you know he poor mouthed uh, Pat for all those years, never specifically, but but I think this may, and I'm being a little bit too Freudian here, but everyone else has been Freudian with Jerry, so <laughs> I, 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 but <laughs> okay, I get it. We had another question back there. Question. For the first time um, in, I guess, really my adult life, I'm going to have, uh, I'm not going to be teaching full time this coming fall. And therefore, I would like to become involved politically in campaign work in a way that I haven't had the opportunity to be. Uh, there are probably seven or eight, maybe nine, congressional districts in California that will be a hard fought, most of them in the South. And there's the Senate race in Nevada uh, with Jackie Rosen running. I wonder if either of you or both of you have any advice for me uh, about where you think at this moment at least it might be most valuable for me to go uh, to help on the ground uh, in terms of the coming election. Well, um, uh, you know, I, I, not that I can give you advice in terms of, you know, how I, I, I don't want to be a partisan in that <laughs> respect, but, but we're, taking if you no, ta- we're taking notes. Yes, if you want to know what, what the most vulnerable <laughs> races are, uh, you know, obviously the, the race in the dis- in Isa, Daryl Issa's district, that's not going to be an open race. Uh, that, that's a much easier race to win than when Issa was there. Ed Royce as well. There's already a, uh, a, a very spirited race there between Gil Cisneros and uh, former state senator Bob Huff. That's another district that's going to be important. And uh, I think one of the most vulnerable Californians here is uh, Dana Rohrbacher. He's he's up there on the top five, and he's going to continue to run. Um, you know, there's other people in the in the room here who are working on this, uh, who, who want to work on this grassroots stuff too. Um, and I and I think. That has been the di- difference, hasn't it, Peter, in terms of the kind of engagement you've seen, the, the women's marches? The, uh, what about that? Is, that? is that different than anything else you've seen in well, your career? Well, I, 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 obviously there's been, a, there's been a good fallout from the whole women's activism and all the people who are running for office all over the country. Um, uh, we've never had anything like this before that could also become a little bit internally destructive, but at the moment it's, it's certainly an encouraging sign. Um, I, don't have any, I don't have any particular wisdom about where you would be most effective in terms of knocking off some of those seven uh, Republicans. Uh, two have quit, and I don't know who's running. You, you said... And, and I think the, another uh, district what, that has been targeted uh, by a couple of PACs one of them, supported by Alan Tauscher, is the Jeff Denham's district. Is another one considered to be yes, uh, right. uh, really important right. to, to Democrats and really possible. You and, know. and those are all districts that were carried by Hillary Clinton. Yes, I think they were. Right. were the seven, seven, district, seven. seven districts in California were carried by Hillary Clinton. Have Republican House members, and those are the ones that uh, uh, Tauscher's PAC and others are, are really focusing on right now. Uh, whether all all of those are going to flip is the question, uh, yeah. Peter. Even, I mean, do you see uh, right now his poll numbers are anywhere from the 30s to the low 40s? Uh, do you think this uh, the, the wave this wave uh, is going to happen, or are the Democrats uh, going to screw it up? In your view? Well, <laughs> <laughs> they got lots of time to do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, the the uh, I mean, as I said, it it uh, your question was absolutely right. What's their message, and is it just uh, to do away to 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 block Trump, um, or is there going to be something else? Um, and I don't know. I don't know what what those things are. I don't know to what extent, as you said, Tom Steyer will push them to the impeachment message, which I think is also a mistake. Um, uh, not because I wouldn't like to see Trump gone, 
uh, but because it's very hard to get there, and then if you get there, you get another bad guy. So it's it's not. Yeah. Uh, so um, and 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 Trump. I mean, Pence is just. Um, you know, he's beholden to the Koch brothers, and he's he's um, uh, he's a full religious nut. Um, uh, uh, pardon if I offended anybody, <laughs> but uh, but if you if you can't say religious nut, and you can say that other word that Trump uses, uh, you know. <laughs> well, we, you know, I think we're going to close up. But your your fi- your final thoughts. Uh, your your title of your book is California Fights Back. Is California? Uh, going to continue to keep up the fight, you think, even after Jerry Brown is gone? What, what's your prospects for... Well, Becerra, oh. uh, Be- Becerra is um, obviously also running for something. Um, and I, he'll keep it up, I think. Um, I assume Gavin Newsom would, uh, given his behavior in San Francisco, going what then seemed against the grain on the gay marriage issue, um, which uh, we all, including me, thought was a mistake at the time, and turned out he was just a few years ahead of the rest of us. So, um, uh, uh, but, but, um, so I think there are people running and who will keep it up. Um, I don't know, I assume if, if Kevin de Leon actually does run for, a Senate, for the Senate, yeah. I assume that he he's, yeah. he's going to be gone. Yeah. Um, well, Presumably, maybe he'll be in the Senate, but he won't be in the legislature. Um, and so, um, and the next governor, uh, I assume, will be one of those two. But could be. Uh, I can't believe can't believe it would be Delaney. Uh, and um, so, do you think in, t- in uh, your your last prediction here uh, is is Trump reelected in uh, 2020? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is a. This is a bet I could safely bet both ways because I probably won't be around myself <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I'll, I give you a thousand to one on either side, either side you want, and just try to collect. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have another question? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go with the second couple more. Question. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I was very taken with your remarks, and I'm very interested in hearing you speak more about the Democratic Party. Um, I'm from San Francisco, and I experienced the progressive moderate split, and I want to know if it occurs in Sacramento, and how that, if it exists, how will it impact your vision about California being a model? Does the progressive, uh, you know, split here in San Francisco sort of uh, uh, give you any clue as to what's going to happen in Sacramento? And uh, um, How does it change California? Well, I think, San, I think San Francisco, in many ways, is still a place apart, um, and and um, uh, in in lots of respects. Um, and if you um, if you go um, eighty miles east or south southeast, you're in a very different world. Uh, if you go to mm-hmm. Modesto or Madeira or um, you're in a totally different world, uh, and and uh, with the different cultures and different everything, um, and 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 obviously, the Democrats don't need to do anything to win in San Francisco; they just have to be here. Um, so uh, so the issue is going to be, as the question there is, what happens in the Central Valley, what happens in Orange County. Uh, what happens in Southern California generally, um, and as I said, those are different worlds, um, and and uh, uh, it's it's a different it's a different culture. Yeah, and so, yeah. and, and, and and what happens in that respect? San Francisco may be symbolic of some other divisions in the National Party, uh, and maybe in in the state as well but not necessarily in individual districts that have to be won yeah. by Democrats. Yeah. I think we have one other back. question there. Hi. Um, I'm here to challenge opinion with facts. Can you guess which state has the highest poverty rate in the country? According to the Census Bureau Supplemental Poverty Measure, it's California. One in five 
residents is poor. Um, what is Jerry Brown doing about poverty in California, and how can we better utilize the state's resources to help people instead of fighting some a president, basically. What can we do to eliminate yeah. poverty in California? The, uh, Thank the you. Yeah, the poverty issue, that was brought up by Jerry Brown today, and that's, a, uh, although very slightly, uh, and it's an issue that a lot of conservatives have raised, which is, yeah, California's doing great economically, but uh, it's one out of five are in poverty, live in poverty here in this state. Well, uh, just, so uh, in that respect, California's it, not doing so great. I, I, it's another success of Jerry Brown that he's getting Republicans to talk about poverty. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But there are, but, but those are some issues, Peter, that he hasn't hit, tackled. Homelessness, uh, income inequality, oh, yes. aff uh, affordable housing. All, all, all of the, it's, it's all there. I mean, they, they did pass that one set of bills on, on the housing. Uh, I think it's very marginal. I think the big problems, and it's one of the one of the draw one of the drawbacks, by the way, of our tight environmental laws, is that it makes uh, it it opens the door much more to nimbyism and makes it tougher to build affordable housing. Um, uh, the other big problem, which hasn't been talked about, it's amazing we didn't mention it today at all. Proposition 13. Yeah. Um, and Proposition 13 has also created part of the, the housing problem. That doesn't deal with the absolute issue of poverty. And, and, and I, I think your, your question is very appropriate. Um, and, and I don't know, I don't know to what extent the state itself has the resources or the wherewithal or the machinery to deal with that, we do have um, an earned income tax credit uh, that I think we're one of the few states mm -hmm. in the country yes. has it. So we've done a little bit to about addressing it. We've done some subsidized ho housing, uh, but not nearly enough. And I, but beyond that, um, the poverty issue is really, really more of a of a, of a, of a federal issue than it is a state issue. As I said, I, I don't think we've done enough. We could do more. Um, yeah, but, and I think it is an issue that uh, you're going to hear the governor's candidates talk about. You're already yeah. starting to, but I think that is a very good yeah. question about the future of California. You've got one last question? Last question. Yeah, yeah, last question here. Uh, well, one comment is for the gentleman who's having a lot more free time in the future. There are three organizations, the Indivisible uh, Movement, Swing Left, and Sister District are three organizations. Swing Left is a little more partisan, but they're all based on getting people to register to vote and actually show up at the polls. So yeah. it's very grassroots. It's not from the top down, but it's from the bottom up. And I think in the US, the more yeah. people we get to vote, the better. Another question about where California can lead or a comment is, uh, I definitely think on the climate is the best leverage that California has because we have so many square miles of, of terrain. Mm -hmm. We also have a funny mixture. We have the really um, highly visible thing of offshore drilling, but we have tons of extractive industry inside the state with mining and drilling um, and also manage water management and water conservation that are part of addressing climate change that Californians can do, maybe not quite as fast as China. I think China can turn on a dime. Right. But it's possible that California can lead in that department. Yeah. Good point. There's a lot of um, uh, possibilities for, for political action. And uh, Peter, I think you've uh, set everyone to thinking about how they can uh, 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 get engaged in the next election with this book. I um, just really want to thank you for, for your insights tonight. Can we uh, give Peter a thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. It's so much thanks to Peter Schrag and Paula Marnucci. And we're going to let you come up and uh, talk to them personally and pick up the heyday broadside. <laughs> California fights back. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it.